Today we're going to take a look at another Reddit post, but this one has a very good question with a very interesting answer that I think it will be something new for you, especially if you're not using serialized reference yet. So let's just take a look at it, go through it, and I'll show you the answer and see if you learn something new. It says, how do I create different behaviors for different scriptable object classes or assets? It says, hi there. I've recently begun learning scriptable objects to use in my game. So, and so far I've created a simple weapon loadout system that allows players to choose two weapons from a list of scriptable objects created, scriptable object created weapons and switch between those two. I want to start doing this with spells as well, but I'm kind of stuck. For weapons, it's fairly easy. I just need to change the weapon model, the range, damage, attack rate, etc., to get the behavior I want. But for spells, they need to all be fairly different. That makes sense. You don't want your spells to all just be damaged with different damage amounts. For example, one spell might be a fireball that lobs out in a direction. Another might be a healing spell that creates a pool of healing whenever it's stepped on. Another might be a spell that buffs damage and attack rates of the current weapon. I have ideas on how I would script all of these individually, but no idea how to do them in a scriptable object. Would there be a way of creating scriptable objects and defining certain behaviors for them? Or would I be better off just creating individual scripts and not worrying about scriptable objects? Actually, you kind of want to do both. So it says, I would include code, but I mentioned I have no idea where to start. So let's just go through and answer. And this is something that I've done in the past. Use scriptable objects um, to, to do exactly these kinds of systems, spells and uh, combat systems. It is very easy for items and inventory and stuff. It gets a little bit more complex for spells, but it's not that hard. Before I look at code, I want to show you what I've set up. And then we'll look at the code and I'll show you how it works. So I'll right click and go to create. And I've got a scriptable object for a spell. The spell is very blank with almost nothing on it except for a list of effects. And then I added a right click context menu to add different effect types. So I could add a damage effect that gives me a minimum amount of damage and a maximum amount of damage. I could add a heal effect that right now just has a static amount. So maybe this heals me for 20. And they've also got a little delay field here that could be how long to wait. So maybe I do zero to, or maybe let's say like one to five damage and then one second later heal myself for 20. And I can add in another one that teleports me and maybe sends me back home uh, three seconds after that. Probably not exactly what I want for the spell to do, but this is the kind of setup that I want to have. I want to be able to have a spell that has different effects that all vary in the way that they ha act, the way that they have their data set up, and that I can then act upon in the game. So let's take a look at how that actually works in code. The scriptable object for the spell is relatively simple and straightforward. I just create a scriptable object class, or create a class, inherit from scriptable object, add that create asset menu so we can create a new spell. Line eight is kind of where the, ma well, line eight and below is where the, the magic actually is. So here we've got the serialize reference attribute. We'll talk about that in a moment because you probably are used to just the serialized field, but notice this is also on a public field. So serialized field and serialized reference are different. We'll talk about it in a moment. Though. Let's talk about what's happening and why we need it. So we've got a list of spell effects, name effects, where I've actually added an extra F. We'll have to remove that. Um, here, we'll just delete that. It's going to remove it from my existing ones. Let's go change it right here in my two menu or my th four menu item things. So right below, you can see line 10. I've got context menus to so just go add those effects. You could definitely do this with a custom editor window or using something like Odin Inspector or any, there are a bunch of different ways to add the things into your UI. I just wanted to keep it with the simplest. So I went with a context menu that adds a new effect to our effect class or our effect list. So we've got our list of effects here. And then if we choose add damage effect, we add a new damage. If we choose add AOE, we add a new AOE damage or a heal or a teleport, depending on what we've selected. So let's take a look at those. Down below, we've got our spell effect class. That's what's in line eight or that list of effects, which has that delay. And you notice that they've all got that delay field. That's because that's in our base class here. But below that, we've got a bunch of subclasses. And this is how it all kind of works. They all inherit from spell effect, which is the one that we're using here and the one that we reference in the list. But then they have their own custom fields for 
instance for instance heal has an amount damage has a minimum and a maximum aoe range is on aoe damage and a max number of targets on aoe damage in fact i probably remove the word aoe there since these are aoe specific ones and then teleport right now has a distance but it could be whatever type of thing it could be like to a specific location or some other thing here now this can be extended upon because our spell effect here it's just a normal class so we can just add a method in here that applies our effect let's add a public virtual I can spell that right. Void apply. And on the base one, it'll just do absolutely nothing. So it'll just be blank and empty. In fact, I can probably turn that into a one-liner. Then in our actual effects, we can override those. So our heal method could say, um, you know, player dot, uh, let's just imagine we've got something here. Player dot health plus equals amount. Obviously terrible looking code and uh, all that, but you can see the general idea. We can apply something here in the damage. We could do an apply here, override, apply, and then same thing. We figure out how to actually apply the damage to our target. We may have to figure out what our target is. It may be something that we have to pass in here, but my guess is we could probably just like figure out what the player's targeted and then do it on that. Unless we're doing like spells that are cast by multiple things, in which case our apply method might also take in a target. So it might have like a... You know, um, spell target target that we're then passing in. And that's the thing that's being targeted by the spell. And then that'd be available in all of these overrides as well. So this is the general way that I would go about answering this question and doing something like this. There are, of course, other ways that you could do this. You could set up a node graph that allows you to do some branching and conditional logic and do slightly more advanced spell effects. Definitely takes a lot more work to build and set up, though, than something simple like this. Or you could um, build out a fully data-driven system that doesn't use scriptable objects at all. I wouldn't generally recommend just writing a bunch of different spell classes, though, because eventually you'll find that it gets hard to kind of do the cool things that you want to do where you mix and match and combine stuff. You want to make it somewhat extensible and open so that you can do that kind of stuff. Now, let's go up and take a quick look at the serialized reference. Why do we need this? If you don't add the serialized reference attribute here, what you're going to get is these spell effects just showing and serializing as the base class. So all you'll see is the delay here. That won't work, obviously. It doesn't, doesn't show up well. So you need to add that serialized reference so that it actually adds a reference to the specific class and not of the, the wrong type here, the base type. That's also, of course, why this isn't an abstract class and why we, I didn't use an abstract method here. Because if I use an abstract class for the spell effect here at the base class, the serialized reference doesn't work right. So I need to make it be an actual class. I'm not sure why that is, but I'm sure there's some good reason for it. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you learned something new, please tap that thumbs up button. If you see a cool question on Reddit that you think I should answer, please link it down below. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.